Good morning, everyone. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Time for another episode of How Much to Keep. We have yet another player to evaluate, to compare, and try to get a general handle on how much they're going to cost if we want to keep them around. What kind of deal are they going to get if they hit the market? And today we're going to take a look at another one of those lower to mid-tier players where they're probably going to get more than like the minimum, but it could be like a little bit more than the minimum. It could be like like a couple hundred thousand more than the minimum, or if things break their way, it could be closer to like 5 million. Such is life for these types of players. There's not a lot of guaranteed money out there. You can pretty much guarantee they're going to get a job, but past that, it's it's hard. And today we're talking about Brandon Shell. I think he's the last player on the offense that we're going to be looking at in this phase. And Shell arguably doesn't even make the cut for that, but I think he does. And I'll talk about why as we go through this video. But anyway, Brandon Shell, right tackle for the last two years for the Seahawks, about to turn 30, signed him from the Jets two years ago, and he's basically been the same player over the last two years. He's decent, he's above average. Uh, PFF grades him out at about uh, 70 over the last two years. He's missed a handful of games, but overall he plays decently. However, his ceiling has been realized. He's just an above average right tackle. He's about to be on the wrong side of 30. And at the end of the day, I don't think there's going to be a ton of money out there for him. And I don't even know if teams are really going to look at him as a starter. They might be looking at him as a veteran backup, a veteran insurance policy, something like that. Uh, his grade last year was 600, uh, I'm sorry, 67. He allowed three sacks, had one penalty. He played a little more than half of the snaps, and then he got hurt and didn't come back. And his job kind of got taken by a UDFA. And we'll talk more about that UDFA later. Of course, he's one of the most interesting subplots going forward. But we're going to try to figure out here what is Shell going to get? What are the Seahawks going to have to cough up on the open market to keep Brandon Shell in Seattle? And we'll also talk about whether or not we would even want to keep Brandon Shell in Seattle. And that's obviously something that's going to be discussed quite a bit because the right tackle spot is very compelling for this team. But let's start comparing Brandon Shell. Okay, so we got some right tackle contracts here. By the way, Spotrack doesn't even list Brandon Shell as a right tackle, which I, I think they list him as a left tackle, which is weird, but whatever. So we're going to blow right past pretty much everybody at the top of this list. Brandon Shell is injury prone. He's above average to good. He's on the wrong side of 30. He's not going to be getting this kind of money. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're, uh, okay, we got down here. Jermaine Effetti. Our old right tackle. So let's start the comparison here. I think this is probably a pretty logical place to start. Because he got a free agency contract last year with the Bears. <clears throat> um, I, I believe he was a Bear the year before as well. So in 2020, whatever he did earned him $4.25 million for one year. And what did he do in 2020? Well, he gave you a full season's worth of snaps. He played over a thousand snaps, five penalties, eh, two sacks allowed. Okay, whatever. And PFF grade 65. So he's like slightly above average as a right tackle, maybe even average. Uh, he did improve a decent amount from 2019 with the Seahawks, but I think Solari actually kind of got Erfetti's career on track a little bit where Fetty started to actually look like a semi-competent player under Solari and then he went to the Bears and got even a little bit better than that. Still not a good player but clear value here right like average right tackle who played the whole season didn't allow a lot of sacks and I think that we're kind of close to a guy like a shell now the, the, the issue being that Erfetti was a lot younger, right? So I don't think we're there yet, but you can see that there are clear comparisons you can draw. Okay, let's move on to the next player on the list, Morgan Moses, who signed a one-year deal with the Jets. <clears throat> now, 
Morgan Moses kind of got caught in a weird spot, I think, because the uh, football team released him, and I felt like all the money was gone, and nobody wanted to pick him up, so he ended up taking one year for $3.6 million with the Jets. And he, when he signed that deal, is the same age that Shell is now. Unfortunately, I don't know how good of a comparison this is because of that thing I just talked about where he got cut and the money was all gone. However, Morgan Moses in 2020 played great. PFF gave him a grade of almost 81. He played pretty much every snap. Six penalties, five sacks allowed. We're not too crazy about that. But his run blocking was considered to be really good. So I don't think this is a terribly apt comparison, but I know some people are going to make it. So I don't think we're there yet. I think Morgan Moses would have gotten a decent chunk more money if he had been able to uh, sample free agency the way every other player got to sample free agency. But nevertheless, there's the comp. Okay, let's keep on going down this list. We got a rookie, Alex Leatherwood, going to skip over him. Kendall Lamb signed a two-year, $6.8 million deal, $3.4 million a year last offseason with the Titans. And Kendall Lamb, let, let, let's uh, take a look at what he did in 2020. Not a whole lot. Barely played over 100 snaps. Good PFF grade. Okay, worth something, but <clears throat> this is like two games worth of snaps. What do you do in 2019? Less. Good PFF grade, but barely more than a game's worth of snaps. You actually have to go back to 2018 to find a season where he played a lot, and he was like average slightly above average maybe his availability was a little bit better but <clears throat> this is not better than Brandon Shell, I don't think so we're kind of already in the ballpark right like Kendall Lamb was 28 when he signed this contract it's not radically different than Shell, so we're probably already in the right territory here um just to go over a few more we got a uh, James Hurst a right tackle for the Saints who signed a deal worth three mil a year for three years last offseason with the Saints and in 2020, what did he do? He played almost 400 snaps, had a good PFF grade, but not a big sample size at all. Uh, 2019, he uh, played even less. Very little experience to draw on here. He played a decent chunk in 2018, but his PFF grade was actually maybe a little below average. It's I, I'd call it like, <clears throat> I don't know. What, what would you call this? Like like uh, slightly above average, replacement level-ish, jaggy. Like, no, nothing special at all. And the final player that I want to take a peek at here before we wrap up our comparisons would be Jawan James, who signed a deal worth less or less than $2.3 million a year for two years when he was 29 with the Broncos. And what did he do in 2020 to earn that extension? Nothing. Didn't play. 2019, what did he do in 2019? Basically didn't play. Very little, very little to go on here. Uh, 2018, okay, he played in 2018 and he played good, but did he play noticeably better than Shell did in 2021? No. So Jawan James gets 2.3 mil off of a year that he had like three years before he got the extension. So we've gone far enough, clearly. And all you put it all together... This needs to be the approximate range for Brandon Shell. He might he might be like you know Mike Remmers might be a decent comparison honestly. I think he's better than Mike Remmers honestly. I think Remmers is actually completely washed. So I think you're looking at something like three point five to three point to four million dollars a year for Shell. What will that be a one year deal or a two year deal? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say that if he gets a contract on the market this offseason, I'm, I'm thinking something like one year, three and a half million. And honestly, you could easily argue it should be more. Brandon Shell was a better player for the Seahawks than he was for the Jets. For the Jets, he was j a Jag. Here, he was a little better than a Jag. So honestly, you could argue his value as a player has gone up. And the cap has gone up. Now, he's gotten older. That's not going to help. But you could easily argue that Shell should probably get something like two years, $10 million. But I think that because of the age, because of the injuries, just because he, he's not really the kind of guy who's going to draw a lot of eyes in free agency, 
I think you are probably looking at something closer to like two years, seven, or one year, three and a half, one year, four. But I will say this, one last thought. The free agency pool for right tackles in 2022 is ugly. Now, Shell's not even listed here because PFF, uh, I'm sorry, Spotrack lists them wrong. <clears throat> but you got Trenton Brown from the Patriots. And I don't think he's going to leave. You got Jermaine Effetti, who, I mean, he he's probably about average. You got Morgan Moses. He's the one guy you might be able to point to and say, hey, that's a guy who can be good or better for us. And then you got guys like Mike Remmers and Bobby Massey or Massey or whatever it is. <clears throat> you, you you start getting down to the bottom of the pile pretty quickly. Um, it, it's not good. And that's going to help a guy like a Brandon Shell get some money. So I'm being pulled in a few different directions here. But I'm going to say Shell gets... I'm going to actually say that Shell is going to get what he got two years ago with the Seahawks. Two years, eight million. Is he worth that? It's close. I don't know if he will be worth that because he's getting older and he gets hurt a lot, but probably. The problem is we have a guy at right tackle who we like, who is young, who showed promise, but we, we can't bet the farm on him. So <clears throat> if we had a solidly established right tackle and we wanted to bring back Brandon Shell to be a pure backup, then I would do that. I would do that for like one year, four million, or two years, eight million. But we don't need a pure backup. We need somebody who can push Kerhan and take over if we're wrong about him. You need somebody at like a Morgan Moses type level. Maybe, maybe even like a, a I don't know if Fetty's better than Shell, but he is more healthier than Shell. So for that reason, I would say no. However, I do think he's worth it. Honestly, to some team, he would be worth two years, eight million, or one year, four million. And if it were not for the fact that Jake Curhan was such a question mark going into 2022, I would probably be willing to do that. But I don't think you can have Shell as your backup when your starter's Curhan, because Shell's just not quite good enough to push Curhan. If Brandon Shell came back, he would just be. A, a backup and you have all these other problems with him too he's injury prone he's on the wrong side of 30 I, I just would like to bring in somebody with a little more upside that being said it would not surprise me if we did bring back Shell as insurance for Kerhan and I wouldn't hate it but he's not somebody who I would trust to be able to push Kerhan to greater heights or take his job if Kerhan is not who we think he is. Unfortunately, if you look at this, there isn't a whole lot to choose from. You got Morgan Moses, who I like. Don't know if he's a fit for this uh, Shane Waldron offense. But other than him, I don't know what you do. I don't think Mike Remmers has much left. He's about to be 33. We already we, we can't bring back a Fetty, right? Like, like that's just goofy. And there's nothing else here. Maybe somebody will get cut. Maybe Mitchell Schwartz will, I don't know, link up with uh, some crazy good doctor and get him back on his feet. You can bring him in for a year. But <clears throat> the, these are not good options. So maybe Shell comes back just to be the backup or compete for the starting job with, with uh, Kerhan. But I'm going to say two years, eight million, and... In a perfect world, I don't want to do it, but in the world that we live in, might have to do it. I don't think it's the worst idea in the world, but I'd love to do better. All right, see you guys later. Peace out. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below.